I set out to learn some of Minecraft's craziest techniques, from the fastest bridging method to some of the hardest clutches, and I even invented what is probably a brand new technique, so strap in for this one. The first technique I want to learn is the long reducer block clutch. In this mode, you drag click against the NPC to take no knockback, and then you hold S and drag click blocks to try and get an extremely long clutch. One of my good friends can hit these insane clutches, but I've never been quite able to land one. Yet. I hopped into the reducer mode and started going for it, and although I got close a couple times, I couldn't ever finish off the landing. And when the NPC started mogging me, I knew it was time for a change. <laughs> Why did he turn his head like that? <laughs> He's mogging me, dude. So I asked my friend for some tips, and he told me that the angle is very important here, as if you were even a little off center from the NPC, you wouldn't get hit straight. And after focusing more on the angle, I was finally getting somewhere. Like, I know from the way that I'm dragging that once I clutch that, even though I slid off the end, I knew it was just a matter of time until I hit the landing. Oh my god. Let's go. Having finally landed the clutch, I turned to the world of bridging to take another page out of Cool Dude's book. This is Quarter Derp, an extremely difficult bridging method that requires you to switch your aim every single block. It's in fact so hard that I made my goal for this technique just 10 blocks of perfect quarter derp, but my very first attempt was something very unexpected. <laughs> Despite getting quite a few blocks, real quarter derp has you fully rotate your aim every single block, whereas my aim looked like I had been stung by something poisonous. Then I realized that the aim for quarter derp was actually the same as moonwalk, so after brushing up on my moonwalking skills, I started practicing aim switch moonwalk. This is the same motion I'll be using for quarter derp, just on every single block. I actually mastered aim switch moonwalk very quickly, so I got back to practicing quarter derp and I was definitely seeing results. My stiff aim from before had turned fluid and smooth, and I knew I was getting extremely close to my goal. All I needed was that one special attempt. And there it was, 11 blocks of real quarter drill, one block more than my goal. Next, I'm going to tackle the fastest bridging method in Minecraft, but speaking of goals, my ultimate goal is to get YouTube rank at 30,000 subscribers. If you're enjoying the content, subscribe to help me on my journey, it means so much to me and we're almost halfway there. The next technique on my list is speed telebridging, the fastest bridging method in the game. Regular telebridging is where you jump off the edge and then turn around and clutch blocks under you. Speed tele is the same thing, but you turn back around instantly once you get those blocks under you, jumping once per turn instead of twice. To chain together speed tellies, you need accurate aim and precise keystrokes, but I had to start somewhere. So I logged on to bridger.land and gave it my best shot, starting with one normal telly and then trying to quickly flick into a speed telly like I see in videos. After a lot of practice, I realized it wouldn't be possible to get all the way across at my skill level, so I had to find a shorter distance. MC Play Ultra Short Mode was the perfect distance for one telly and two speed tellies just what I needed. I got back to the grind, but it wasn't looking too promising. That is, until this happened. Oh my god. Let's go. In my surprise, I clutched too low and sold the clip, but this was still my first complete speed telly, and it was fast. If I didn't miss the clutch, this actually would have been my fastest time ever, and while I did get a couple more good attempts, I wasn't getting close very often. And then, a breakthrough. I realized that I was turning way faster than I should. Since speed telly was the fastest method, I was putting way too much effort into making it fast, especially in my turns. Once I realized this and started turning slower, I immediately started to see results. I was doing really well, but I still didn't have a single clean run. I kept jumping over the pressure plates, clutching a block too low, or blocking myself off with my drop too. At this point though, it was once again just a matter of time.
Having conquered what I thought was the hardest technique of the video, it was time to face my nemesis, the drop 3. Some players consider this the hardest kind of clutch, and I agree. A drop 3 is a clutch where you quickly place 3 blocks under you from the very edge of your reach. It requires impeccable aim and timing. I've never been good at this clutch, but that ends today. So I hopped on Bedwars practice and started training. At first, I practiced some smaller clutches to make sure my aim was solid. Since I didn't know which way I was going to be hit, it trained my clutching aim on both sides. Perfect. Now I was ready to start learning drop threes. My goal for this technique was actually to be able to do them in game, so although long drag clicking made the clutch way easier, it's very important that I learned how to do it with every clicking technique since I won't be able to long drag in every situation. After getting some good clutches with long drag, I started practicing the other methods, eventually figuring out how to replicate the clutch with short drag and butterfly. Butterfly was harder than the other two since the clicks weren't evenly spaced, so my timing had to be solid. <coughs> Did I clutch that? Lastly, I took on the final challenge of doing it with double clicking. Only having four clicks to place three blocks made it extremely difficult, but eventually I got this attempt. Once I learned the clutch with every clicking method, the only thing left was to see if I could execute it in game. Let's see if my training pays off. Oh, drop three! Drop three! Drop three! Oh my god! Sorry, come on. Oh, I dropped three! I dropped three! I dropped three! Let's go. It never happened. <laughs> and now, on to the final technique. The one I came up with on my own. People have experimented with doing a 360 telebridge before, although it's not very useful or practical. People have also used Godbridge as a way to start their telebridges for a long time, jumping once and then tellying off the end. I was thinking about using Moonwalk to start a telly the same way when I realized that there was potential for a 360 telly, rotating all the way around on the jump and doing a flat 3 telly from the opposite side. I decided to give my idea a try and surprisingly it was totally possible. Oh, that's so sick. So I logged on to Bridger.land and just like this, the Moonwalk 360 telly was Okay, maybe I fumbled my first good attempt, but just a little while later, the Moonwalk 360 Telly was born. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for this video. Please drop a sub if you enjoy my content, and I will see you in the next one. Like your bitch, come parts on my jeans, you ain't never seen this shit Now I'm up, I got a couple bad bitches on my dick I've been on my bank, bro, you been lurking on my shit Lurking on my shit, every type of beef is one-sided Get a hell of a bitch, you boy, you